Dr. Fauci shuts down Trump for using him in a campaign ad. Hi, welcome to JOA. If you're new to my channel, please click subscribe and click the bell button so you'll be the first to know when I upload. I really appreciate it. if you subscribe, you click the bell, you like, and you share. Also, consider following me on my Twitter page, Jordan Jordan Show. Thank you so much for your support. In addition, I'm also selling merchandise, you guys. You know, it's it's coldness is about to appear around the corner. And a lot of us, we're in this pandemic quarantining. We we singled up. Ain't no, ain't no cuffing this season, okay? Because of this pandemic is expected to be a high case in COVID due to the lack of leadership in this presidency. So you're going to need a sweatshirt to basically a hoodie to basically hold you on at night and keep you tight. So look at the colors. They got different colors, different colors, different sizes. My big ass could definitely fit in one. So I'm sure you can as well. All right. So Fauci was on CNN with Jake Tapper. I'm going to play this clip and I'm going to come back with my opinion. She, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases at the NIH and a key member of the White House Coronavirus Task Force. Dr. Fauci, uh, good to have you back. I, I, I do have to ask you about this Trump campaign advertisement where you're on camera saying, quote, I can't imagine that anybody could be doing more. You quickly came out with a statement that noted that that sentence had been taken out of context. You were talking about the whole of government response, not President Trump. And of course, you've never endorsed a presidential candidate in your five decades of public service. Should the Trump campaign take this ad down? You know, I think so, Jake. I think it's really unfortunate and really disappointing that they did that. It's so clear that I'm not a political person. And I have never either directly or indirectly endorsed a political candidate. And to take a completely out of context statement and put it in, which is obviously a political campaign ad, I, I, I thought was really very disappointing. What would you say if uh, I told you I heard that the Trump campaign was actually preparing to do another ad featuring you? You know, that would be terrible. I mean, that would be outrageous if they do that. Um, in fact, that might actually come back to backfire on them. I, I hope they don't do that because that would be kind of playing a game that we don't want to play. Uh, so I, I hope they reconsider that. If, in fact, they are indeed considering doing that, I hope that they reconsider and not do that. The, um, let's talk about the pandemic, because right now President Trump is getting ready to leave for Florida. That's a state that has an 11 percent positivity rate. That's pretty high. Uh, any minute he's going to go there to hold an outdoor campaign rally. Now, you called the Rose Garden event two or so weeks ago a super spreader event. No distancing, very few masks. We know the previous Trump rallies in Tulsa, Oklahoma and Minnesota have led to infections and illnesses possibly even death. We know the Trump campaign does not require masks. They do not require distancing. As a public health matter, how worried are you about these rallies that the president is kicking yeah. off? You know, Jake, I'm, I'm glad you used that word as a public health matter, because put aside all of the issues of what political implications a rally has, and just put that aside and look at it purely in the context of public health. We know that that is asking for trouble when you do that. We've seen that when you have situations of congregate settings where there are a lot of people without masks. The data speak for themselves. It happens. And now is even more so a worse time to do that because when you look at what's going on in the United States, it's really very troublesome. A number of states right now are having increase in test positivity, states above the Sun Belt, states in the Sun Belt. If you look at the map with the color coding of cases and states that are going up, you see states in the Northwest and the Midwest. It's going in the wrong direction right now. So if there's anything we should be doing, we should be doubling down in implementing the public health measures that we've been talking about for so long, which are keeping a distance, no crowds, wearing masks, washing hands, doing things outside as opposed to inside in order to get those numbers down. We're entering into the cool months of the fall and ultimately the cold months of the winter. And that's just a recipe of a real problem if we don't get things under control before we get into that seasonal challenge. President Trump says he's immune to the virus because he has survived it. Uh, his physician, Dr. Sean Connolly, gave him the okay to travel. He says the president is no longer considered a transmission risk. Connolly did not say the president has tested negative. Now, I know the CDC does not say that testing negative is required before somebody is allowed to travel and be around others. Can you explain that to us? Why not? 
Well, you know, it just goes to what's practical in the community. They have found that if you are 10 days from the onset of symptoms, the chances are extraordinarily low that you are going to be transmissible, that you would be able to transmit it. If you really want to nail it down, you do a PCR test and you show that the person has a level of virus that's not going to be transmitted. And that's what you can do sometimes. Whether they do that or not, that remains to be seen. But the president is what would be well within the 10-day time frame of being non-transmissible. So, Fauci's quote was taken out of context. The quote was in regards to Vice President Mike Pence task force, not in regards to Trump, old orange baby head ass, okay? And so, Trump appeared in Florida Monday night, yesterday, with Governor DeSantis. And DeSantis was on video high-fiving Trump supporters without a mask. There were people in the crowd without a mask. And then on video, there's also DeSantis being seen rubbing his nose after touching the Trump supporters that aren't even wearing masks. And so this was actually Trump's first campaign that he's held ever since being diagnosed um, with the coronavirus. And the CDC is not liking what, what is going on here. Attendees did not appear to be socially distancing and a Republican governor touched his face after he interacted with them. This behavior is not recommended by the CDC. This is from Newsweek. Maintain at least six feet of separation as much as possible in areas that may lead to close contact within six feet among other people, such as weight rooms, group fitness studios, pools and saunas, courts and fields, walking, running tracks, locker rooms, check-in areas, parking lots, and routes of entry and exit. The CDC guidelines on COVID-19 say. So, you guys, do not do what this man is doing. Do not shake hands. Don't give high fives. Do elbow bumps or touch others because... Because close contact increases the risk of acquiring COVID-19, the guideline also adds. And this is the same man, the same governor who clearly said at in the get-go that he did not know that asymptomatic people are able to transmit the COVID situation. So this governor is obviously incompetent and isn't qualified to be a leader in his area. As well as there's 15,000 people who passed away in Florida alone due to his lack of leadership and due to his lack of disbelieving in the information of COVID-19 at first. So you guys, this is just insane. This man is crazy. You don't go shaking hands with people without masks. And it's just, I mean, come on now. This, this administration is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, okay? Anyways... Let me know what you think in the comments below. Please do subscribe and click the bell button so you'll be the first to know when I upload deuces. Yeah.